Hi. How is everybody? It's Mandy P. from SuburbanStereotype.com. Um, just wanted to offer a little bit of, um, I don't know if I'd call it encouragement, more like solidarity <laughs> to all you mamas out there who might be struggling today. Um, I have a pretty great life. I do. And, and I don't want to say that bragging, but um, just more thankful. I have a really fantastic husband. I have six beautiful healthy kids and um I have a lot of material blessings as well that you know that I can't even really begin to properly say thank you for. Um but having said all that, unfortunately I'm human and I for the last few days have been having some feelings of discontent. And um I just want to smack myself when I say that because like I mean, if you know me personally, if you could peek into my life, you'd see <laughs> I have nothing to be discontent with. Um, anyway, without going too deeply into why I say that, and I want to list off all my possessions or my blessing. I mean, I don't want to sound, you know, full of myself. I just want you to understand I have nothing truly to be discontent with. There are so many people in this world who have sick babies, um, ailing spouses, you know, they worry about whether they're going to be able to feed their families or live in their homes for another day. And um, I'm so thankful that those are not concerns that I have. But I'll tell you what, I um, I had a little meltdown today. And um, I had a moment, and I've had them before, but for some reason I don't know, I feel like telling you about it today, where I just, well... I was cleaning up spilled sauce in the kitchen after lunch because for some reason making the spoon go from the bowl to the mouth successfully with kids just, you know, it's like, it's like a 50, 50 shot. And so I was cleaning that mess up and just, you know, gosh, why I just cleaned the table. I just swept the floor, blah, blah, blah. And here I'm doing it again. And my six year old daughter came in the room to tell me that there were books and flashcards all over the closet floor in their playroom. And they have a big walk-in closet in that room. Um, and that's where all of their toys and all of our homeschooling things are. Um, so it's not the first time this has happened. I assure you, our two-year-old is very handy and is really good at making messes. And so, um, and of course, because I'm a genius, I never put these items up out of his reach. Why would I do that? Um, so I go into the room and I see this mess just all over. I've posted pictures on my Facebook page before of messes they've made in there with Legos, which is a thousand times worse. But it was just like the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back today. And I walked in there and saw this mess. And I had just cleaned up these flashcards yesterday. They're really rec long rectangular flashcards. And there's, they're like this thick when you put them all together. And so there's a lot of them. And little reader books for homeschooling and um, just sprayed all over. And in a moment that I'm not very proud of, I did one of these and I just cleared the rest of the shelf of any other books that were on it. And I ranted and raved and commented about feeling like a maid and reassured my kids that I'm not a maid and um, that it's my joy to take care of them. But... And then I listed all the reasons why I was feeling frustrated. And that was awful on a number of levels. One being that my kids have absolutely no need to hear that. They should never, ever, ever feel like a burden to me. They should never, ever feel like um, my taking care of them is a bad thing. And I'm pretty sure that's what I translated to them. Pretty sure. And then I proceeded to drop to the floor and cry <laughs> for like five minutes straight. And, um, you know, they awkwardly stood there. I could feel them behind me. I had my back to them, but I could feel them standing there. They didn't know what to do. They wanted to comfort me. Um, but it was an uncomfortable situation for everybody. And so I cleaned up the mess and I collected myself and I apologized to them for acting that way. And then I explained why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And I did my best to reassure them that they are not a burden to me, that they are a blessing and a joy. Because surely that's what they got out of my little tantrum. Um, and then, you know, we went back to life as usual. But I just wanted to offer you some encouragement, I guess, in saying that if you've felt that way before, for when you can know you're not alone. I, I feel that way a lot sometimes. I don't always react that way. But um, 
I think sometimes it's very, very easy to take for granted the life that we're given, even if it's filled with blessings, because when you get into the day to day and the humdrum and the constant, you know, what's that saying? If you do the same thing over and over and expect a different outcome, that's the definition of insanity. Well, sometimes I feel like I'm living the definition of insanity. And so I am coming to the conclusion that I need to do a couple things differently. One would be, um, to, you know, all the usual staples that you read in every single blog post in your Facebook feed or Twitter feed, um, make date nights a priority for you and your spouse. Get away. Make me time, which I feel is a very, I hate that it has a negative, negative stigma attached to it, but make some time for yourself. Um, and then, you know, I need to address areas that are a problem for me. If cleaning up flashcards and books every single day is a stress to me, then probably I need to move those items. And I am not one that baby proofs my house. And it drives me a little bit crazy when, you know, I go somewhere and um, everything is up at a six foot height because they don't want their children touching it. That whatever, to each his own. For me, I never really baby proofed our home outside of safety issues. I just taught them as best I could that if I say no, it means no. Now, if you have a two-year-old, you understand that doesn't carry a lot of weight sometimes. And we're in the process of learning. So if I want to save myself some heartache, I'm going to put those things up higher or put them in a cabinet so that he can't get to them. Um, and also, I need to start teaching my kids some more responsibility because, quite honestly, I do it. If they leave a mess, I'll grumble about it. I might even yell at them about it, but I clean it up. And that's not teaching them anything. Um, if they really want something and they're begging me for something, I usually try to get it. And I say, I, but my husband and I, we try to get it because we love them. And, you know, you hate to say no to those beautiful little faces, especially when they're really good kids. But teaching them responsibility will go a lot further than buying them the latest gadget or toy that they want will. So I'm, I'm coming to you to say um, maybe some of these um, triggers, these hot buttons for us can be um, alleviated a little bit if we just think of ways to avoid those situations so that we don't have to have these kind of meltdown moments. So those are my suggestions. What about you? Do you feel that way sometimes? Do you just feel so over it sometimes? Just, yes, your life's a blessing. You would really never trade it for the world. But do you have those days sometimes where you've just, you've had it, you know? Um, and if you say no, I know you're lying. So you might as well confess. Do you have those days? And if you do, what do you do? You know, what are some ways that maybe you can mix some things up that might make your life easier in the long run? So that's it. That's all I got for you today. Had a little meltdown, had a little tantrum, and now I'm over it and I'm moving on. I hope you guys are doing well and I'll talk to you soon.